Live from Bellevue, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering Smartsheet Engage 18. Brought to you by Smartsheet. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Smartsheet Engage 2018. I am Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick in Bellevue, Washington. Our first time here, second annual Smartsheet Engage, and we're very pleased to be joined. Welcoming back to theCUBE, Mark Bader, the CEO of Smartsheet. Mark, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you, good to be with you. Great job on the keynote. Thank you, appreciate it. So you can see the buzz behind us. We just got out of the keynote where um, you guys kicked it out. There was a couple of things Jeff and I were talking about that were unique, that I haven't seen uh, very much, if at all, in all the keynotes that we go to. One, you started off with an explorer who had a very um, empowering, enlightening message all about communication. And then something that you did that I thought was really cool that I don't think I've ever seen is you actually, during your keynote, went into the audience where you have about 2,000 customers here representing 1,100 companies across 20 countries and just ad-libbed, hey guys, tell me about your, your company, yeah. how, how is Smartsheet empowering you? Yeah. And as you said, that was all natural. Yeah, and I, th I think part of, part of it making it real for somebody is giving you something that's relatable. So we started off the conference, as you said, with Ed Veaster, who's arguably the most famous, accomplished climber in the world today, and, and he talked about the importance of communication and preparation and teamwork and clear decision making in a context that was I mean, spectacularly visual, right? This mountain and those climbing shots. So people relate to that. And then when you introduce those contexts in the, in the business setting, it's like, oh yeah, this, this applies to me, it applies to all of us. So the, the notion of getting into the crowd in a non-rehearsed way is to really get people comfortable with, hey, I can share something, I can share an experience, and there's no one right answer, it's my experience. And that's why you're here, as you said in your keynote, and we know this as well, if companies aren't designing technology for the users, what's the point? Yeah, you're right, and, and one of the things I tried to highlight was, when you say for the user, it's not just for the user, the end user, like developed by a few people, spread to everybody, but it's empowering each and every person to say, hey, I want to do something more transformational. I want to manage, automate, scale it. I don't want to be given that solution by someone, I want to do it. And there are hundreds of millions of people who have the appetite and the interest and the need for it. So that's what we're trying to sell into. You know, Mark, we go to so many shows, right? And, and everyone's chasing innovation. How do we get, how do we get more innovative? Yeah. Especially big companies, right? And you did you share two really interesting messages. One was your kind of core message, empowering everyone to improve how they work. So like you said, not just the top level decision makers, right. not down in the developer weeds, but everybody up and down this stack. Right. And then you shared a Stephen Covey quote, really talking about how do people keep them engaged. And the way people are engaged is that they feel they're empowered to do something right. for their clients and their right. customers. Right. So it's such an important piece, and, and I think it's, it's easy to talk about, harder to execute, but yeah. what is the answer to innovation? Giving more people the data, the tools, and the power to take all that and do something for their customers and thereby unlock all this tremendous value that you already have in your four doors. Absolutely, and I think the point of unlocking, so we have, you have 100% of your workforce. If you empower only 4.3% of them, for instance, the developers in your group, you're leaving so much opportunity on the table. And again, you don't get that unlock or that innovative spirit by just using something. You have to live with it, you have to work with it, you have to wrestle with it, and through that, innovation occurs, ideas get generated. So if you can get that ideation happening within the, at the midpoint of your company, not the top 5%, huge opportunity. I think you were even quoted in, in the press release maybe around the IPO that happened a few months yeah. ago, congratulations. Thank you. In saying that, maybe naysayers in the beginning when you were a company of six, as you were talking about during your keynote, people thought, you're going to build this on a spreadsheet construct? And right. you said, but 400 <laughs> to 500 million people know that construct. Right. So right. you're going into an audience of knowledge workers, of which there's a massive percentage, right. designing something for yeah. business, lines of business, IT, finance, marketing, mm -hmm. sales, who actually need to work with that. These are, we're not talking to us about APIs and developer and code yeah. speak. You're building this for a very large percentage of the population. We are, and I think when we talk about serving a large population, it's tempting to say, well, they can't handle much, let's go lowest common denominator. Let's get to something super, super simple. The problem is, with simple, you don't always get value. So how do you combine relevance and comfort and understanding with capability? And the product's changed a lot since the early days. It's no longer just a grid. We have dashboards, we have forms, we have card view, we have all these elements that are now being brought forward. 
But one of the things that we've always respected from the beginning is, don't throw away what somebody understands and is comfortable with. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the best, but they know it. And right. people are very nervous about just jettisoning the things they know, so like embrace it. And then what we had talked about earlier was, how do you really listen to that customer signal and say, okay, I'm comfortable, I like this, but I want more. And that ability to respond to that request, I think has really helped define who Smartsheet is today, you know, 12 years later. The other piece you talked on is, and it kind of segues off of that, is people have systems already in place. They have right. tools that they use every right. day, right? There's this, there's this kind of competition for the top layer of, right. of, the, of the desktop, but the reality is we have many, many applications that we have to interact with every right. day. You guys are really taking a, a, a competition approach with all these existing Absolutely. stuff. Where it fits, where Absolutely. it's working, to your point, they're already using it, make it work, integrate with. Uh, don't try to you know, rip and replace all these other systems that are in there. Yeah, and I think the, you, know, you come across some people in life who want everything. I need total, complete presence. And you're really discounting what people appreciate. And I think when you take the, take the view of, I'm going to listen to my client, I'm going to listen to what they love and understand, and I'm going to let them articulate how they want it to work, we are in a very diverse, multi-app world today. If you actually march in somewhere and say, yeah, all those decisions you made, those were the wrong decisions, you should trust me on everything, you'll be walked out of the building in about 4.2 seconds. So we're really living that philosophy, and I think in great partnerships with Google and Microsoft and Slack and Tableau and others, uh, we're able to actually demonstrate that. Yeah. And then to take it from the concept to reality, a great demo, I'm sure you didn't have this plan a couple weeks ago, was you, know, you talked about the state of North Carolina yeah. uh, and the, the preparation and the response to the to Hurricane Florence Correct. and that they were very quickly able to build you know, a super informative dashboard mm -hmm. to, to let everybody know who needed to know what they needed to know. Correct. And how long did that take to put together? That was it's under amazing. 24 hours. 24 hours. And, and the difference here is the difference between building or developing something and configuring something. So, and the difference there is when you actually build something from scratch, we have, we have bare dirt. We need to put a foundation, we need to build the house, we need to uh, shingle it, we need to insulate. That takes a long time. So how about we go to a house that exists, let's change the colors of the blinds, let's, um, let's put in a certain sofa, let's furnish it. And the configuration element versus construction, that gives people velocity. Now what they also want is, they want to actually put their own uh, texture to it, their own, they want to make it their own. So the Department of Transportation dashboard that they produced for FEMA and the Coast Guard and the State Governor's Office, it didn't look like anybody else's dashboard. It was tailored, but it was so quick to build. And the great thing there was, so many people who accessed that site for information on runway status and power and fuel, they could focus on the citizens as opposed to what the heck is going on on the ground. Right. And that, that I mean, that provides a lot of purpose to our team when we see our product used that way. You talked about speed just a minute ago, and, and speed obviously, every enterprise of whatever size needs yeah. to move incredibly quickly to gain competitive advantage, to increase revenues, et cetera. You guys have some really um, very uh, eye-catching statistics that you're enabling customers to achieve. I read enabling an average business leader to save 300 hours a year, yeah. 60,000 hours a year saved across an average organization. That's a big impact. Yeah. What, how, how is speed a factor there? Yeah, I think, I think speed I look at in a couple dimensions. One is, is it time saved? But there's also an element which is speed of experimentation. So we go into an initiative, we say, we have this amazing idea, and we're going to have all these returns, we think. <laughs> well, <laughs> not every one of the bets you place actually makes it, or actually yields. So if you can empower a team to more quickly experiment, configure, try things, see what works, and then double down behind those, if you can run five times as many plays as your competitor, you have five times as many chances to find that next winner. And so when we talk about speed, it's again, velocity of decision making, saving time, but also organizationally, how can you unlock those possibilities? Part of that also was enabling cultural change, which mm -hmm. is not easy, no. it's essential for digital transformation. We talk about that at yeah. every event, and it's true, but how do you put that in action? You and I were chatting off camera about one of your customers that is a 125 year old oil and gas yeah. company. How do you enable them to kind of absorb and digest a, a, a culture of experimentation mm -hmm. so that they mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. really move their mm -hmm. business forward as quickly as they need to. Yeah. Well, I think this is, there's, a, there's a great quote that one of my mentors early gave me, and it was, all hat, no cattle. 
and they all had no coddle it refers to the person who talks about how big their ranch is and how big their where's where's your herd so you can talk a lot but you have to demonstrate it so when they go in and there was another gentleman who talked about this idea of transforming their implementations across 300 project managers and the quote was we're going to get you up and running in two to three weeks and he goes never no chance now, he ended up working with us, and we proved it to him, and when you get a win like that, you can demonstrate speed and impact, those things carry a lot of weight in organizations, but you have to show evidence. And when we talk about why we're landing and expanding as some of the world's largest brands, it's not because we're just talking a big game, it's because you're able to demonstrate that those wins, and those lead to further growth. Right, and then it, you, you talked off another with the catalyst. Yeah. Um, but even more, I like the, the concept of a point guard. Yeah. Good point guards make everybody else on the team Absolutely. better. They mm -hmm. do a little bit on their own, they hit a couple mm -hmm. key shots, but they make everybody else better. Right. And you're seeing that in terms of the expansion and, and just in the way your go-to-market is. You don't come in usually as a big enterprise sales, I don't think. No. You come in you come in small, you come in at group mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. and then let the catalyst, mm -hmm. let those point guards yeah. build success within their own team and then branch it out yeah. to, uh, to a broader audience. Yeah, and I'm a big believer in, I don't think people can be classified into catalyst and non-catalyst. That's a very sort of blunt force approach. I view it as you have catalysts, you have catalysts who haven't been unlocked, and then you have people who aren't catalysts. But very often that point guard is going to activate the power forward, the center, and holy smokes, where did that come from? And what, what we see is, when we see this growth happen in companies, those players around that point guard get lit, get sparked, and once they're sparked, it's on. And then we see that growth happen for a long, long time. <laughs> we saw some of that, some of those quotes. <laughs> yeah, the queen with we the did. Queen. I forget what she the was. Queen the, of the world? I'm the queen, out of, queen of the world. Queen it's of like, that's a big <laughs> statement. That's empowerment yeah, right there. It is empowerment. And, and the one where I, I tweeted this, one of the quotes, I won't share this product name, that it can actually, it seems smart, she can help reduce workplace anxiety. anxiety exactly, exactly. Which everybody needs. <laughs> yeah. So it's been six months since the IPO. You have doubled your attendance in your second year only at yeah. Engage up here in Bellevue, Washington. Washington. What are some of the exciting things that you announced this morning that have been fueled by the momentum that the IPO is, I yeah. imagine, ignited? Yeah, a couple big things is we, at, at every tech conference, you're going to hear about new capabilities. Here are new bells and whistles and features and capabilities we have. But what we're hearing from customers, they also want us to frame those capabilities in things that are consumable. So not everybody wants to configure or build, as we talked about earlier, they say, I have a need, it's specific to this area, and do you have something for me? More turnkey, like that gentleman I said, two to three weeks to turn around his whole implementation team. So those we refer to as accelerators. So we announced a few new accelerators today in the sales realm, in terms of uh, being able to better manage engagement plans with prospects and clients, and on sophisticated deals, it's a very common thing. Um, and the other piece that I think is really uh, important is not just talking about business users, which is a huge focus for us, but also how do we better support IT in their needs to regulate, control, have visibility into how Smartsheet is used. So those were a couple of highlights. Um, and then the, the ability to give people more controls over how they share their data. There have been some issues in the news recently where people have shared too broadly. They've led, that's led to issues, so we're hearing from our customers give us more fine-gauge controls and confidence over how our corporate information is shared with others. Well, Mark Bennett, I wish we had more time, but we thank you so much for stopping thank by you. the Cube and chatting with Jeff and me. Great, Great to see momentum. You. We look forward to having uh, a number of your execs and customers and analysts on the program today. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks, Mark. Good to see you. I do want to thank you for watching the Cube. I'm Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick live from SmartSheet Engage 2018. Stick around. Jeff and I will be right back with our next guest. <laughs>